So uh, now we will, in the second part, we will going to talk about the multidimensional things, multidimensional rays. So arrays with more than one dimension. Remember that we say int array and new int array, and then we put one number over there inside the brackets. So that is only one dimensional array, which has maybe 10, 20, whatever that's number you have provided that much elements in that one. So we can have multi-dimensional arrays in cyber programming and ideally we can have n dimension, but the point is how we can handle all those dimensions, that's something different. If we have five dimensions, then how we are going to process that particular data which is in the five dimensions. So it's not that simple. So hardly you can see that there will be some uh, multi-dimensional data inside our programs, but yes, when the things are complex, then we need to handle the complex data and then may go into the multi-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays, yes, we can, you know, it's quite familiar, we can normally use it here, but ideally it is n dimensions and there is no limit on it. It should be a positive number. So we have defined a two-dimensional array. Instead of giving the one integer value, I am putting that particular specific comma over there and then I am giving two, this is, this is one array, this is second array, this is third array, this is fourth array, so we are getting those dimensions here. So they are the four by two. What does it mean? It has four arrays of two items. Four things within each thing contain another two things inside it, okay? So it's more like a table, you know, rows and columns. Maybe you can say that first one is the column, second one is the row, or the first one is row and second one is the column. Yeah, first one is row, how many rows are there, and second one is showing me the column, how many columns are there. So two-dimensional table, tabular form, that is also quite familiar that normally we use in our programming. So these are the number of rows and these are the number of columns. Again, because these are the index values, index values start with zero. Four means zero, one, two, three. Two means zero and one only, okay? Uh, array 2D, okay, that's our one, one. Again, when you say one, one, it will look at that index value one. So that first value is representing the row. So it will go that particular specific row row number one, where we have three and four. And then you are saying that the column number one as well. So in the row number one, column number one, so that is four. Then we can say that three zero, so we find out the row number three and then the index value zero. So in this way we can access the elements within that particular specific two dimensional array. Using the index value and then the same concept, starting value is zero, and ending value is one less than the, that particular specific dimension size. So multidimensional arrays, we can, um, a 2D array, again, three by two. So again, three, row, three rows and two columns and two values inside in each. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it will create it like that. Now we are talking about a three-dimensional array, and now we are saying that, look at that, this is a bigger array starting from here to here, and then this is again a one thing. And then inside we have, and again, two different things with three, three elements in each. Okay, so this is again how we can define the array. So here we have three index values that need to be moved on. Array dot rank, that will give me the, uh, what you can say, how many dimensions are there. Array dot rank will give me the how many dimensions are there. If you are using it on a single dimension array, that will return one. If you are using it on a two dimensional array, it will give me two. So if you look at that two, two and three. So here in the 3D arrays, we have three dimensions. In the 2D arrays or two dimensional arrays, we have two dimensions. So it rank is giving me the number of dimensions that exist in my array. On a single dimensional that we normally define in the week number five, so that will always give me the rank, will give me the one value because only one dimension is there. Now, as we try to uh, find out the length, 
uh, we have array, array dot length give me the number of elements in that array, single dimension. But what about this one? So now we say give length of each dimension. Now we also provide that we are talking about, we want to get the length, but which index value or which dimension? Zero dimension, one dimension or two dimension. So that's again depending on the uh, uh, size we have. So when you say uh, i is equal to zero and i, d, I is less than array 3d dot rank. And what is that rank? Rank will give me the number of dimensions which exist inside the array. Three dimension, okay. So we're starting with zero, zero, one, and two. So when you say dot uh, 3d dot get length zero, it will give me the main, the first dimension, how many elements are there in the first dimension. Okay, how many elements are there in the first dimension? And then we say one, then it will give me the how many elements are there in the second dimension and how many elements are in the third dimension. And now based on that particular specific scenario, in the single dimension array, we say i is equal to zero, i is less than length dot array, or sorry, uh, array dot length, i plus plus. We start from the first element, go to the last, process that. But this is not the case with the two dimensional or the three dimensional arrays. Now we need to find out first how many elements are there. So we have the first loop for the first dimension, inner loop for the second dimension, again inner loop for the third dimension, again inner loop for the fourth dimension. So again, if we have 10 dimensions, then we have 10 inner loops to process all the elements which exist in that particular specific array or the multi-dimensional array. So first of all, we need to find out the length of each dimension. Then based on we are trying to get the, what you can say that we are trying to uh, make the inner loops and so on, and then we can go on. So how we can access those things? Uh, this is our, uh, we are, I'm trying to 3D array. So look at that, three nested loops. The outer loop, that is for the first dimension. So we say that i is equal to zero, i is less than 3d dot get length zero. That is, will give me the first dimension length. And then you say console dot print, we are printing that bracket over there so that inside the bracket we can see the results. And then we am for the second dimension, again I am getting the j is equal to zero, j is less than the length of the second dimension, and then we go on. So for each dimension, we find out the length and then we make a loop. If we have four dimensions, we have four nested loops. If we have five dimensions, we have five nested loops. So it's not that simple to handle. And one more thing that I would like to tell, huh, these multidimensional arrays are not the part of our exam on the ninth week. They are not the part, okay? So, what we are doing, we are just accessing all the elements in the 3D array and printing them on the screen. And that will be the result here. We have two elements, uh, sorry, uh, three, uh, two ele actually two elements. In the first one, we have two elements, the first dimension. These are the, what you can say that, the two elements here, the first element and the second element in the first dimension, zero dimension, you can say that. And then in each element in the first dimension, we have again two arrays. So we have two elements here, two elements here, so two, two. And then each inner, the innermost dimension, we have three elements in each. So, you know, we are trying to print it on screen. So this is how we can access. And once we can access each and every element, we can do the processing. Maybe you want to apply a certain specific processing on a specific row, on a specific dimension, then it becomes the logic that you want to implement that one. Rectangular arrangement of the elements, rows and columns, uh, two dimensional array, we can use them to do some mathematics for the matrix. So we can rows and columns, that is exactly our tabular form, two dimensional array, okay? So we have, this is our tabular form, uh, the matrix, they are arranged in the rows and columns. So we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, we can scalar multiplication, transposition, inverse, row operations. 
Of course, I'm not going to do all the things here, but I will just give you the examples that how we can use the two dimensional arrays to perform all these operations on the arrays. So, first of all, uh, rectangular uh, matrix, if the rows and columns are same, uh, not equal, then it's a rectangle. If they are equal, then it's a square matrix. We have a diagonal matrix, triangular matrix, identity matrix, symmetric matrix. Diagonal matrix only exists in the diagonal elements and all other elements are zero. Triangular matrix, the elements which exist only in a triangle, maybe lower or maybe upper, but not all the elements are, the other elements are zero. Identity matrix, the diagonal mat num values are one, all one, and all other values are zero. RAM, whenever we are want to add and subtract the matrix, their rank must be same. They must have the same number of rows and same number of columns. Otherwise, we cannot add two different matrix together. So they must have the same rank. For example, we have two rows and three columns, so two by three two rows and three columns, so two by three. So they are both have the same rank, the same number of rows and columns, and now we can add the corresponding values. So these values, the corresponding value, first row, first column, first row, first column, we add them together, we get the answer. Similarly, we can first row, second column, uh, first row, third column, and second row, second column, and so on. So we add all them together or subtract them together, we can do the addition and subtraction we can get the answer. So in the matrix, a two dimensional array, we can define the rows and columns are like that. So we have two different matrix, which two, two by three rank, two, two rows and three columns, and we can do, we can add them together, we can find out the answers, and then we can get the answer. But how we can do it? Simple. So we are having the uh, two dimensional uh, variables, add matrices, which is going to take two two dimensional elements as an input. This is a method that we are defining. It will return me again a two dimensional array. And then we are saying that the result, result is equal to, because these matrix are need to be added. So we are trying to find out the get length of these matrices, first dimension and the second dimension, okay, zero and one. So because these are the dimensions, so we define our result matrix with those dimensions. How many rows and columns are there? So accordingly, we define that particular specific index values or the size of those dimensions. And then for i is equal to zero, i is less than uh, matrix one dot get length zero, the first dimension, second dimension. And then we are just adding result ij is equal to matrix ij plus matrix two ij. Take the corresponding values, add them together, save the result, save them in the result at the same place, at same position, same row and column position. So we can add and once we have the result, we can return. Simple? No. Very simple. No, <laughs> not simple. <laughs> For me, it's quite simple, but yeah. So we are just trying to initialize our result matrix here. Uh, what will be the size of that particular specific result matrix? So we're just putting over there. And then here we are making a loop for each dimension. Dimension one, dimension two, make a loop for rows and columns. And then here we are adding them together, the corresponding value and saving the result in the results. And we get the answer here. How we can use it in the main method. So we define two matrix one, matrix two as a two dimensional arrays and then we are asking the uh, method add matrix that we have defined earlier and giving these matrix one matrix two as an input and then we are, and then again we are printing that particular specific matrix when we are printing that particular specific matrix we again need to make nested loops this is the printing part the last one <coughs> Again, addition and subtraction. So, subtraction is again same. Instead of having that plus sign here, we say negative sign. The rest is same, exactly the same. Instead of having the plus sign here, we are having the negative sign. 
we can multiply scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication means we are multiplying a number with the matrix. So when you do that, actually this number is going to be multiplied with each and every element inside the matrix. So we can do the things, we, we get the matrix, we get the multiplication, uh, scalar value, or integer value, and then we can just return the values back. So here we are creating the result, uh, result or the two dimensional array, and then we get the dimensions from the matrix itself, because the size should be same. So we are just getting those things, we are initializing the size of the result matrix, and then for, two, for first dimension uh, array, uh, and the second dimension, we are making the loop, and then we are multiplying each value with the scalar and saving the results inside the result matrix. Simple? Yeah? That's good. I have seen something like this. That's what. Okay. And then, so we can do uh, multiplication is a much more complex part. Transposition, inverse, row operations, not going to do that. They are much more complex than simple addition and the scalar multiplication. So arrays, uh, now we have jagged arrays. Jagged arrays, it's an array of arrays, okay? In the multi-dimensional arrays, if we have two elements in the first dimension, then the size of the second dimension elements is exactly, exactly the same, you know? Just like the arrays we have, if we have an array, then that particular specific array must have a specific number of elements, constant values but jagged array will change that particular specific behavior. They are not uh, like regular sizes. Maybe one array of two elements, the second array of third, three elements, the fourth array of maybe 20 elements, so you can have different. But that is not possible in the, even the two-dimensional arrays or the three-dimensional arrays or the multi-dimensional arrays. So jagged arrays will help us to have different number of elements at different positions. So we call them jagged array, array of arrays, elements at the array. So these are the reference points and each reference actually is representing an array, a one dimensional array, okay? So we can define something like this. Int, there we say brackets and comma. Now we are not putting the bracket and comma. We are saying that array and array. So we are saying that array of arrays. So new int, there will be three arrays. And then what is the size of each array? We have not defined it here. Because when we are talk, talking about the multidimensional arrays, we have to give those values, 3, 4. So now we know that we will have three elements, and each three elements, we have four different elements over there. But here, we are not doing that. So we can have different sizes at different points. So in the first, we are say three elements. In the, in the uh, second, we are saying that how many? Six elements. In the third, we have the four elements. So we can have multiple uh, arrays of different uh, sizes at that particular specific. Array. So that's a different way. We call them jagged arrays, the arrays of arrays, okay? So this is how we can print them again. So i is equal to zero, i is less than jagged root length that will give me the first dimension length and then in each dimension and at each point how many elements are there that's a simple one dimensional array we can assign them we can also have the multi dimensional arrays for the jagged arrays so here we having that each jagged array element is actually pointing a two dimensional array so we are having that one next week we will be talking about gui programming okay I am, I've just stopped that lecture recording.